Class 9. Moment. The last leaf. It is autumn. The wind is blowing hard and it is raining heavily. All the leaves on an ivy creeper have fallen except one. Why doesn't the last leaf fall? Sue and Johnsy, two young artists, shared a small flat. The flat was on the third story of an old house. Johnsy fell very seriously ill in November. She had pneumonia. She would lie in her bed without moving, just gazing out of the window. Sue, her friend, became very worried. She sent for the doctor. Although he came every day, there was no change in John C.'s condition. One day, the doctor took Sue aside and asked her, Is anything worrying John C? No, replied Sue. But why do you ask? The doctor said, John C., it seems, has made up her mind that she is not going to get well. If she doesn't want to live, medicines will not help her. Sue tried her best to make John C. take an interest in things around her. She talked about clothes and fashions, but John C. did not respond. John C. continued to lie still on her bed. Sue brought her drawing board into John C.'s room and started painting. To take John C.'s mind off her illness, she whistled while working. Suddenly, Sue heard John C. whisper something. She quickly rushed to the bed and heard John C. counting backwards. She was looking out of the window and was saying, 12. After some time, she whispered, 11, then 10, then 9, 8, 7. Sue anxiously looked out of the window. She saw an old ivy creeper climbing halfway up the brick wall opposite their window. In the strong wind outside, the creeper was shedding its leaves. What is it, dear? Sue asked. Six, whispered Johnsy. They are falling faster now. Three days ago, there were almost a hundred leaves. There are only five left now. It is autumn, said Sue, and the leaves will fall. When the last leaf falls, I will die, said Johnsy with finality. I have known this for the last three days. Oh, that's nonsense, replied Sue. What have old ivy leaves to do with your getting well? The doctor is confident that you will get better. Johnsy did not say anything. Sue went and brought her a bowl of soup. I don't want any soup, said Johnsy. I'm not hungry. Now there are only four leaves left. I want to see the last one fall before it gets dark. Then I will sleep forever. Sue sat on Johnsy's bed, kissed her and said, You are not going to die. I can't draw the curtain for I need the light. I want to finish the painting and get some money for us. Please, my dear friend, she begged John C. Promise not to look out of the window while I paint. All right, said John C. Finish your painting soon, for I want to see the last leaf fall. I am tired of waiting. I have to die. So let me go away peacefully like one of those poor tired leaves. Try to sleep, said Sue. I have to paint an old miner. 
I will call Behrman up to be my model. She rushed down. Behrman lived on the ground floor. He was a 60-year-old painter. His lifelong dream was to paint a masterpiece, but that had remained a dream. Sue poured out her worries to Behrman. She told him how Johnsy was convinced that she would die when the last leaf fell. Is she stupid? asked Behrman. How can she be so foolish? She's running a high temperature, complained Sue. She refuses to eat or drink and that worries me a lot. I will come with you and see John C. Behrman said. They tiptoed into the room. John C. was sleeping. Sue drew the curtains together and they went to the next room. She peeped out through the window. There was only one leaf on the creeper. It was raining heavily and an icy cold wind was blowing. It seemed as though the leaf would fall any minute now. Behrman did not say a word. He went back to his room. Chauncey woke up next morning in a feeble voice, she asked Sue to draw the curtains. Sue was nervous. She drew back the curtains very reluctantly. Oh! Sue exclaimed as she looked at the vine creeper. Look! There is still one leaf on the creeper. It looks quite green and healthy. In spite of the storm and the fierce winds, it didn't fall. I heard the wind last night, said Johnson. I thought it would have fallen. It will surely fall today. Then I'll die. You won't die, said Sue energetically. You have to live for your friends. What would happen to me if you die? Chauncey smiled weakly and closed her eyes. After every hour or so, she would look out of the window and find the leaf still there. It seemed to be clinging to the creeper. In the evening, there was another storm, but the leaf did not fall. Chauncey lay for a long time looking at the leaf. Then she called out to Sue. I've been a bad girl. You have looked after me so lovingly and I have not cooperated with you. I have been depressed and gloomy. The last leaf has shown me how wicked I have been. I have realized that it is a sin to want to die. She hugged Sue, hugged Chauncey. Then she gave her lots of hot soup and a mirror. Chauncey coped her hair and smiled brightly. In the afternoon, the doctor came. After examining his patient, he told Sue, Chauncey now has the will to live. I am confident she'll recover soon. Now I must go downstairs and see Bearman. He is also suffering from pneumonia, but I am afraid there is no hope for him. The next morning, Sue came and sat on Johnsy's bed. Taking Johnsy's hand in hers, she said, I have something to tell you. Mr. Behrman died of pneumonia this morning. He was ill for only two days. The first day, the janitor found him on his bed. His clothes and shoes were wet and he was shivering. He had been out in that stormy night. Then they found a lad ladder and a lantern still lighted lying near his bed. There were also some brushes 
and green and yellow paints on the floor near the ladder. Chauncey dear, said Sue, look out of the window. Look at the ivy leaf. Haven't you wondered why it doesn't flutter when the wind blows? That's Bearbarn's masterpiece. He painted it the night the last leaf fell.